Our first reading on this Passion Sunday comes from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Brethren, Christ becoming a high priest of the good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, neither by the blood of goats or calves, but by his own blood entered once into the holies, having obtained eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and of oxen and the ashes of a heifer being sprinkled sanctify such as are defiled to the cleansing of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who by the Holy Ghost offered himself unspotted unto God, cleanse our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And therefore, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of his death, for the redemption of those transgressions which were under the former testament, they that are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, At that time, Jesus said to the multitude of Jews, Which of you shall convince me of sin? If I say the truth to you, why do you not believe me? He that is of God hears the words of God. Therefore, you hear them not, because you are not of God. The Jews therefore answered and said to him, Do not we say well? that thou art a Samaritan, and hath a devil. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my Father, and you have dishonored me. But I seek not my own glory. There is one that seeks and judges. Amen, amen, I say to you, if any man keep my word, he shall not see death forever. The Jew therefore said, Now we know thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead, the prophets are dead, and thou sayest, Any man keepeth my word, he shall not taste death forever? Art thou greater than our father Abraham, who is dead, and the prophets are dead? Whom dost thou make thyself? Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father that glorifieth me, of whom you say that he is your God, and you have not known him. But I know him, and if I shall say that I know him not, I shall be like to you, a liar. But I do know him, and do keep his word. Abraham your father rejoiced that he might see my day. He saw it and was glad. The Jews therefore said to him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham was made, I am. They took up stones, therefore, to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. We come to the moment of the great action of the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And these were understood by the swords that pierced our Blessed Mother's heart. And so let us turn to our Blessed Mother that as we begin this Passion Week, we might enter more deeply into the mystery of the life of Christ, desiring our lives in union with His. And so let us pray to her for the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Which one of you would say that Jesus is a liar? Would we say that our Lord Jesus Christ is a liar? If he's not a liar, then every word he says has three qualities. 
that would basically convict each one of us. First quality of the Word of God. It is creative. It creates a situation for you and I to grow in holiness. It must be creative because it is of God. And all things of God are fruitful. They multiply. The great gift that God has given to us of His Word is that which we most easily neglect. And yet it creates the situation for each and every one of us to enter the kingdom of heaven. St. Philip Neri, in this very action, heard about a sister in France. The sister was a good sister, good nun, but she was being plagued by a devil. That devil was telling her, you have many sins, you're going to go to hell. And she was depressed. Her friends would go to her with the words of the world. You're a good person. You're going to be all right. Don't worry. The words of the world didn't console her. St. Francis, St. Philip Neri heard of the situation and decided to go and visit the nun. He came into the nun and knowing that he was a holy man, everyone listened to his words, he asked her a simple question. Why did our Lord Jesus Christ come into this world, sister? Can you tell me? Certainly, Father. He came in order that he might bring sinners to heaven to take away our sins on the cross. Oh. And then the good Father asked her, Are you a sinner? Oh, yes, Father. I am one of the greatest sinners. Oh. And our Lord is seeking out the greatest sinner as he is the good shepherd and the good shepherd knows his and they know him. You know Jesus. Oh yes. Then tell me, is he not seeking your soul to bring your soul to heaven? And through the word of God, the young sister began to realize she was being deceived by the word of the devil. The Word of God recreated her, gave her joy, and made her realize that every word from Almighty God creates my life in the image and likeness of Christ. Hence our Lord Jesus Christ says, those who are of God hear the Word of God. The reason you don't is because you are not of God. Isn't that an interesting statement? The reason you don't understand your life is you're not of God. You do not allow the Word of God to create your life. Instead, what happens? Your Word, out of your mouth, condemns, writes, criticizes. And if that is true, then we are not of God. Instead, the Word of God lifts up. It transforms the soul in order that the soul may realize that everything in this world, every action, every person in this world is meant to lead me towards the kingdom of heaven. So the first quality of God's word, it is creative. The second is, it is eternal. What does our Lord Jesus Christ say? Amen, amen, I say to you. Anyone who hears my word and keeps it shall never die forever. In other words, every word of God that you have, that's why we teach kids to memorize the Hail Mary, the Our Father, the Glory Be. These are packets of the word of God. Every word of God that enters into me and I hold on to eternalizes me. Example, St. Osana. A little girl of three years of age, her parents began at three years of age to teach her how to contemplate the presence of God. They set up their little statue to the sacred heart, and that little place was sacred for the little ones. And the little ones would go before the sacred heart, and she, little Ozana would sit there and talk to Jesus, and begin to give her heart to Jesus at that little ripe age of three. By the time she was six, she was in communication with our Lord Jesus Christ. By the time she received First Holy Communion, she was seeing and hearing Jesus. 
And so here was Saint Osana, this little girl, and she said, Oh Lord, I so want you to come into my heart. Please, be with me. And our Lord Jesus Christ, in her memoirs, appeared to her at the age of seven. And what did our Lord appear like? A little boy carrying a cross with a crown of thorns and all torn. And he said to Osana, Osana, will you love me? Will you love me? And she answered, Yes, Lord, I will love you. Take this cross. Suffer with me. And I promise you the kingdom of heaven. She took the cross. She lived the cross. Her sufferings are remarkable. And so this little girl grew with the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ and our Lord Jesus Christ took her to the kingdom of heaven. The word that he gave, he fulfilled. He will never leave us completely empty, wondering, is he going to do this for me? No, his word is eternal, just like he is eternal. If we trust him, then all things will work unto the good. If we don't trust him, then we make a bigger cross for ourselves than we are meant to carry, and then we fall. So God's word is creative. God's word is eternal. And God's word is prophetic. It is prophetic. What he has done, he shall do. What he has continuously done tells us what will happen in the future. There was a king, a fable of a king in Asia. This king sought from his particular merchants the finest jewels. This one merchant came in with jewels and the king purchased the jewels and found out a little later why they're all glass. That son of a gun. So he called the merchant in, brought him before court, and the merchant was told, you are condemned to death by the lion. In jail, he had his date set. On this day in June, you will die. The beast will consume your flesh. All the people were in the arena. There was the king, who in justice had condemned the man. And there the man was, shaking in his boots because he knew the lions were going to be let free and he would be torn to pieces. This was not a martyrdom. This was a punishment. All of a sudden, with the man shaking in his feet and his boots, the people were all silent because they just wondered, would the king kill this man for jewels? They wondered. Then all of a sudden, the gate opened. No lion came out, but here came a frisky little lamb. The people seeing the lamb all of a sudden stood up and said, Long live the king! Long live the king! Now imagine, every one of us has sinned. Every one of us has stolen the richness of the purity of God out of our baptism. We've destroyed it. We deserve death. We deserve hell. But what does he send instead? The king sends the lamb. In this Passion Week, the lamb is going to be calling us by means of his word and his work. Calling us. Will you come and make a visit here? I'm staying here in this humble little place. Will you come and make a visit? Will you come and walk the stations of the cross? Will you come and understand what the lamb has done for you? The lion could have come out and torn you to pieces. You deserve that. But a lamb comes out and says, I will take your suffering. I will take your sins to the cross. And then look at the book of Revelation. What God has done from the very beginning in verse 3, 21 of Genesis. God took the man and the woman and because of the shame, he clothed them not in leaves, he clothed him, as the Hebrew says, in the skin of the lamb. What did Abel do? His dad told him, we sin, son. Mommies and daddies don't want to tell their kids they sin, but they sin. We sin, son. God did something. He took the lamb. 
He slew the lamb. He poured out the blood of the lamb. And he clothed us in the skin of the lamb. That is a sacrifice you must do in order to honor God. Abel remembered. He took the firstborn, unblemished lamb, the best of his flock. He offered the sacrifice and the smoke rose up as a praise to God. Confirming what his dad said. This is what God asks of us. Cain did not. He took the fruit of the earth. There is no blood in a turnip. There's blood in the animal. There's blood in Christ. That's why he turned to our Blessed Mother and said, Will you give me a human nature? The first mystery of the rosary is that. That God asks us to give him human nature. Our human nature. And make the sacrifice. So God's word is creative. God's word is eternal. God's word is prophetic. Now, this is the word of God. In the same text, we now have the contrast, which is called the tyranny technique. This is the tyranny technique. It's happening today. Our good bishop, Williamson, knows that in order to keep the resistance and keep the faith alive in the world, I must consecrate another bishop. He consecrates another bishop. What's the word from Pius X Society? Those two were always violently opposed to union with Rome. The Jew. You are a Samaritan and you have a devil, you violent man. Ad hominem. Ad hominem. They cannot attack the truth. The Pius X Society knows the truth. The church is in worse condition now with Pope Francis than ever before. That's the truth. Heresy after heresy, action after action that is contrary to the mind of Christ. Lifting up sin. And Bishop Williamson is violently opposed to union with that role. Aren't you? Aren't you? I am. I'm violently opposed to that sin that is taking place in Rome. The seat of the Antichrist, as the prophets have said. And it is, because now we see the tyranny of this man. Basically, making sin that which is acceptable, instead of no. Error is not acceptable. Sin is not acceptable in our life. We must purge ourselves. That's why we have confession. That's why we make the Stations of the Cross. That's why we pray the Rosary. To make reparation for our sins and the sins of our world. We cannot make peace with divorce. We cannot make peace with abortion. We cannot make peace with euthanasia. We cannot make peace with same-sex marriages. We cannot, because it's contrary to the mind and heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is contrary to His Holy Word. So the tyranny technique is being presented twice. Thou art a Samaritan and you have a devil. Did our Lord deny that He was the Good Samaritan? No. Samaritan in Hebrew means defender. And he, as the Lamb of God, will defend us against the devil. He says, I have not a devil, but I am a good Samaritan. I will lay down my life for my sheep. So that's the first thing. The tyranny technique, understand it. It's always a question of ad hominem. I cannot attack the man in his truth, so I will attack the man in himself. Bishop Williamson, you are violently opposed to uniting with Rome. Don't you see the visible church is the real church? The answer is no. The visible church today is not the real church. It does not have the marks of the true church. One, it is not one in its sacrifice. Everywhere in the world, this mass that is being offered in a vernacular way is changed everywhere you go. I know it. I went through it. It's not one in the sacrifice any longer. It's not one in the doctrine that is teaching, and you hear that. Therefore, it does not have the marks of the true church. It is not holy. 
It is lifting up sin. That's not holiness. That's sin. What is holy is holy. It's what God has confirmed in this word of God and what is continued till the very day we die and the day we will be judged. God's holy word is sanctifying us. It is what? Catholic. It means that we are meant to go out to all the world and say, come to the sacrifice of the Lamb. It is a sacrifice. It is not a supper. Nobody dies for a McDonald's hamburger. This sacrifice we will lay down our life for because we have seen and we will see that Jesus Christ is continuing as the Lamb of God to lay down His life for us. That's why we change. It is one, it is holy, it is Catholic, it is what? Apostolic. You are to go from here and proclaim the truth to others. Otherwise, the word does not remain in you. You are to proclaim it to one another in your homes. Your family should be heirs or packets of holiness and happiness. That's what it's meant to be. That means the little ones grow in an environment of love. We are one, we are holy, we are Catholic, we are apostolic. And the final mark, we are persecuted. We are persecuted. We are persecuted because, as the Jew says, you know what? Our father is Abraham. Our Lord says, if you were of Abraham's lot, you would honor me. For Abraham honored me. I know Abraham. You're not yet 50. Before Abraham was, I am. Ego sum, Yahweh. And they picked up stones. Thou hast blasphemed. No, I have told you the truth. I've told you the truth today. What will you do with the Word of God? What will you do? Will you say Jesus is a liar by your actions? Or will you instead begin to say, No, I must now take up the Word of God each and every day. The Word of God transforms my soul. If the word of God is not in me, then the word of the world is. And I know the word of the world by the demonic. The demonic causes me to mock that which is good. Hence, we have Pius X Society mocking Bishop Williamson, mocking Bishop Four at this present moment, knowing that those two men have been instrumental in the foundations of this society and the growth of this society. Now we mock them. Second, violence, anger. Oh, these men are violently opposed. In other words, we put that on them when we should be violently opposed. We should be violently opposed. That's why we say these are heresies. These are pins in the package of faith, like the gas tank, starting to put pins into it. You and those who unite with the highest ten society at this particular moment in history are going to have your faith sapped out. They're not going to speak the truth to you. They're going to lullaby you into sleep. And you cannot be sleeping in these times. You must be wide awake realizing what is taking place. And so our Lord Jesus Christ says to us, I am who I am. You will have to answer that question. Jesus Christ is Son of God, and the Son of God comes into me in Holy Communion. Greater is He in me than he who is in the world. Therefore, I get rid of the anger, I get rid of the mocking, I get rid of the sensuality, I get rid of the tongue that is griping, criticizing, and condemning. I start lifting up what God has given to me in order that I might realize this great gift of salvation. Let us ask Almighty God to open us up. As the poet, I slipped his fingers. I escaped his feet. I ran and hid because him I feared to meet. One day I passed him fettered on a tree. Each hand and foot was pinioned by a nail. For pity's sake, thought I, I'll set you free. Nay, said he, Take this cross and follow me. 
not hard nor grievous, if you bear it tight. And so did I follow him who could not move, an uncaught captive in the hands of love. In the name of the Father, the Son.